All right, so we're going to be converting some pseudocode into LC3 assembly. And the approach is you just take one line of pseudocode and convert it to the appropriate amount of LC3 assembly lines. And you don't look ahead of yourself, you don't look behind yourself. You just do things line by line. And magically, your uh, programs are going to manifest. So we're basically being a human compiler where we just do line by line. And there's two approaches here. For homework five now you can use registers to store your variables i'm um, like you can maybe let r0 represent sum for the rest of your program r1 represent count for the rest of your program or you can start using ram to store your variables all right for example like this and i'm going to be using ram to store variables because registers were not designed to be storing things and registers are just for computation, but they weren't meant to be storing values for permanently. Um, so, and if you do this, when you get to more complicated programs like with 10 variables, 20 variables, um, you're going to run out of registers, right? So eventually you'll be forced into using RAM anyway. So we'll just start using RAM. And so I count that there's three variables here, so I'm just going to make a spot for all of them and give them a label so we can access them later. Um, And you could get away with doing like dot fill the sum it says it says zero. So instead of just doing dot blockward one, which leaves the sum with garbage data, you could do dot fill zero, which is the same as dot blockward, but it also just replaces the garbage data with whatever you specify it with. But for now we'll just do dot blockward one and we'll do this setting explicitly. Alright, so now that I have my variables, um, I have some dedicated RAM spots for my variables, I can just start going line by line. That's what we'll do. So int sum equals zero. I can just get any register I want to zero, and I can store that into sum. Done with that line of code. All right, next line of code. I can count it as five. And the always approach is just do line by line. I don't I'm not looking behind myself. I'm not looking ahead of myself. And so, how can I get? I need to get any register to be equal fives, and then I store that in the count. To do that, I can and register to zero, and I can add that register by five. I can store that into count, and we'll be done. And notice I'm not trying to optimize my code. I'm not trying to look back when programs say, "Wait, this line of code doesn't do anything because R zero is already zero from like three lines ago." Uh, we're not going to be trying to do that in this class because that's very confusing and. We're not trying to make you make optimal assembly, we just want to make sure that you know how to write assembly at all. And the optimizer will take care of all this um, inefficiencies for you. So, um, we, all we want you to do is just turn your brain off and just do things line by line, and you don't have to get clever. Anyway, these two lines are done. Now, next thing is we have a for loop. So once I see this for loop, um, I'm going to start copy pasting a template that I posted on Canvas. And I'm just going to straight copy paste this right here. Indent it. Great. Okay, so and I'm just gonna be filling in these little brackets that I've set up for you. So the first thing is we gotta do loop initialization here. And that's gonna be this line of code. So I'll just write that there. And how can I do that? Well, I'm just get any register I want. Zero, and I'll add that to the one. And notice I'm reusing R0 a lot here um, because and I'm not afraid of overwriting R0 from like the last line of code because all my registers are are just scratch work registers. And I'm not afraid of stepping over my scratch work. And since all my variables are safe in RAM, I don't have to worry about like I'm overwriting something. So that's also another benefit of using RAM instead. And then I'm just going to set store R0 into I. And this is done. Great. Now we need to prepare our condition code. So in order to do that, we just need to get any register to have um, i minus count. So we want everything to compare some zero, so I'm just going to get i minus count to register. So i minus count. How can I get that? Well, I can first get i into one register. 
We'll load up. Overload is R0. I need to get counts in another register. And then, so I gotta do what I do. I need to do two's complement negation. In order to two's complement something, I can just do not r1, r1, and then I need to add it by one. So now I have negative counts in r1, so I can just add r0 and r1 together. You get i plus negative counts, which is the same as i minus count, and that should set up our condition code. And when do we branch? Well, it looks like we wanted the, the success condition is less than or equal to. The opposite of less than or equal to zero is going to be greater than zero, which is positive. So we're going to branch on positive. Great. Now the loop body. The loop body is going to be this line of code. One. So first thing is I'm probably gonna need to get um need to get sum in one register, so I'll load r0 sum. And this I can rewrite this as sum equals sum plus i. So that's why I need to load sum because I need to get this sum and I need to get this i. So I'm gonna get my register with i. Then I'm going to just add r0 and r1. To get sum plus i, I'll just store it right back into sum. And the lens code's done, and it looks like I think that's the entire body already. So great, we're done with that. And it looks like this is one thing we're gonna fill in the loop update statement. That's gonna be this line of code. So it's gonna be i plus plus. How can we do that? Well, it's gonna be we we'll get i in one register. Gonna add it with one, and then we'll store our zero back in i. It's hopefully, I think that's it actually. So we've done our loop condition, and now we reach our this bracket. And that bracket corresponds to this end for no op, so we're basically outside the bracket, and that means we actually finished our program. So we just kind of did things line by line and eventually we just built up to our entire program. Um, we didn't have to think too much about how the code interacted with each other. We just did, once it got to pseudocode, just turn your brain off and just do things line by line. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.